you're very welcome back. Now, are you extremely sensitive to other people's moods? Do you hate small talk? Uh, do you know when people kind of are spooky or do you call them spooky or very perceptive? No, if you have answered yes, then you may be part of a very elite group who are highly intuitive. Our next guest has written a book that explains why you have this powerful skill and how it is best to use it. We are thrilled to have Heidi Sawyer with us and it is called Highly Intuitive People, Heidi. And can you explain to us first what a highly intuitive person is? Uh, highly intuitive people feel things deeply. They are very perceptive. So if you've been called, oh gosh, you're really perceptive. You really know how I feel about this. They're very empathic. They try not to judge. At times they can be highly over-pleasing. So they try to make sure that everyone's fine, feeling fine, because they feel it themselves. Mm. They feel other people's emotions deeply. You've just described a very nice person to me. That's yes. right, that sounds yeah. like they're good people. That they're people. good people. Uh, yes, uh, I would say highly intuitive people tend to be very nice people. Sometimes they are over nice people mm -hmm. because they're trying to make sure that everyone's feeling comfortable and happy about things. But they also see things ahead of time, so they might bring something up. So they might say to a person, a family member or a colleague, oh, I don't think that's a very good idea. And that person would carry on and do that, and then they can do the whole I told yeah. you so later. Is it like a sixth sense in one sense? Yes, it is, but it's more, I would look at it as a natural sense. So if you look at around about 15 to 20% of any animal population has a, a more instinctual part of the herd, so you could say you have that as well in humans. Okay, so, so that's what it is. That's just heightened sense heightened of sense. Awareness. surroundings or awareness. Mm. Just in your book, just to quote here from your book, you're talking about the left hemisphere, the left part of the brain, isolated and static, I suppose realistic, while the right hemisphere is fluid and open. And this is the general persona of the intuitive, sensitive person. Yeah, so the person would have more, more of an awareness of things that are going on. So instead of just what's immediately in front of them. They'll be able to feel things going on, feel what's going on in, in someone else's mood, uh, have a, a heightened sense of awareness as to mm -hmm. things coming from different directions. Yeah. If, if they can sense someone, something in somebody else's mood, do they know then what to do and how to approach that person? Yes, so they tend to be really good at being a chameleon around things so they can change in uh, to suit another person's situation so they will see things from your pers perspective rather than try and force their perspective onto mm -hmm. your world so they'll be able to see how you would how you would want to interpret something mm -hmm. so they're very kind mm -hmm. so they they'll be the great in um working relationships dynamics those kind of things mm -hmm. but sometimes people take advantage of that so intuitive people though wouldn't jump in would they hang back a little bit and not necessarily mix as well as others because yes. they're sussing the scene? Yes. So they, they're not very good at small talk, so they like, but if someone wants a deep conversation, they'll be there for hours. Yeah. So if it's a party or something like that, if it's all very superficial, they'll kind of slope off. But if there's some indication that it's going to be a deep conversation, they'll be there for hours. So there's no beating around the bush. They're no. straight in there. Yes. Okay. If they want to be. If yeah. they want to be. If they want to be, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, we, we were chatting about all the positives. Now, there's a negative side to this that I didn't know anything at all about. How could something like that, because you've described somebody who's very, very positive, very kind, somebody who's very understanding, so how can there be a, a bad side to it? Well, the bad side is that a person can become very overwhelmed. So, um, lots of sensory overload. Uh, they can find that they, they will do the perfume, what I call the perfume dash, yeah. uh, through... Um, an airport. Shopping centers. <laughs> and what is yeah. that? That they can't, there's too much. The smells are overwhelming. The or smells. What? It, it sort of all smells as one. They can't. It's it's too much. It's too much. So they will find that they'll either have a sneezing fit or they get a headache or that kind of thing. It's just an overload on their senses. So can some intuitive people have sensory issues? Yes. So uh, you quite often see that they will have a heightened sensitivity to products perfumes, scented things, uh, you would see, have them around uh, situations where they, they might have health situations which are more associated with the immune system than anything else. Okay. So food sensitivities, that kind of stuff. So we have some people who we'd, we'd all know. Einstein was mm -hmm. a very intuitive person, is that right? Yes, I would have said so, yes. And Oprah Winfrey. 
Apparently. Yeah, well, Oprah Winfrey, you, you, would, you could look at her in terms of that she was very into, or is very into deep conversations with people. Yeah, and she is intuitive. And gets She's the best intuitive out even when, yeah, yeah, in interviews and different things that you would see that she is very intuitive as to what the person will say next. Yes, she gets the best out of them. Yeah. So it's a deeper emotional conversation mm -hmm. than perhaps the average person. Because from, from the outside, look, we, we saw, we looked at Einstein, you see, mm. Oprah, you think these are intelligent people, but there's more to it than that, really, isn't there? You would think they're left-brained, yeah. you see. I would have thought Einstein would be very left-brained. Well, if you're looking at it from, you know, when something's very left-brained, it's very much there, it's in the here and now. So something has to be an idea before it's created. So right hemisphere is very ideas-based, so Einstein would have had to That's have a the idea before he could cre create. Execute it, yeah. yeah. In your book, you have different experiences of highly intuitive people. Can you tell us about some of those? Different experiences of different types of people. Yes. So um, some people would, well, if look at my own um, experience, I would look at it from perspective that uh, when I was working in a management situation, I saw, you know, what do I do here? I've got a situation where people need to be motivated. I had an idea, just came to me very instinctually to use uh, gold stars. It was a very simple thing, so I used, because I had it in my mind, I thought, oh wow, people used to do that at school, they'd, they'd work for their gold star, and I started putting something very simple in, like gold stars, and people loved it, and they worked for it, mm -hmm. and it was a, a huge motivating factor. So mm -hmm. there's lots of different, yeah. different ways. It's so it's motivation there, yeah. but you can also see, I believe you've predicted sometimes somebody that was pregnant or if you can see an end of a relationship with friends, that type yes. of thing. Yes. And how, how do you do that? It can or be what? dangerous now. It can be a dangerous <laughs> well, thing to Well, I think for highly intuitive people, they don't really know that they are. So it's a case of someone pointing it out to them. So I had a friend, who, or I still have a friend, who um, she, I, she told me off. She said, you've been telling everyone I'm pregnant. And I said, well, you told me you are, aren't you? She said, I am pregnant, but I haven't told anyone yet. <laughs> And I said, oh, well, I swear you told me. She said, no, I haven't. I haven't told you yet. So you, you pick things up without... Yeah. You see things, you see signs. Yes. Without realising... But you have to be able to control it as well, Heidi, don't you? That's the whole thing. I think, um, yes, otherwise it becomes something that's quite overwhelming for people. But I think at the same time, uh, people don't necessarily know that they are mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. other people start to point it out. Okay. okay. Well, you it's deal with different types of, of traits, I suppose, to change the lives of intuitive people and people that struggle, I suppose, with conversations, struggle and that they might be seen as peculiar or different. They're mm -hmm. not. They might just be highly intuitive. Thank you so much, Heidi, Heidi for coming to us. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Of course, okay. you get the book in all good bookstores now.